the end of this chapter, I say, and for me, the end of, well, fifth grade videos. Oh, 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 sad. Oh, no. Hey, don't cry, Mr. Wara. Wait, was that me? Was that you? I don't know. It was me. Yes, don't cry. You'll find other videos to do. Yes, my friends, I say that because, well, I'm getting near the end here. Getting near the end, and, you know, I only have a couple more to do. This one and one more, and all my fifth grade go math videos will be up in my channel. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. So, getting kind of excited to meeting that goal of mine. We are looking at lesson 11.9. It is algebra. It says apply volume formulas. We're going to be taking the volume that we've learned and we're going to apply that probably, you know, that, that, that real world, baby. Real, yeah, probably like that because we're going to be applying it to something like that. But first, the essential question. Our learning target, our focus, our objective, our in learning intention. Yes, they all mean the same thing. It's what we're going to get out of this lesson. And it states, how can you use a formula to find the volume of a rectangular prism? Okay, it sounds right down our alley. We are ready with the connect. It says, both prisms show the same dimensions and have the same volume. Okay, what do you notice is different about them? They look pretty similar. Yeah. Oh, ah, look at that one has been, you can see it's been broken up into one cubic inch. Okay, you can see that by the lines that are there. And when you look at the other rectangular prism, you can see, haha, they are not broken up that way. It's just larger, like just one big piece, as you will. But they will give you the same volume, though, because look at the dimensions are the same, right? We have three by four by four, whereas the other one has, well, three by four by four. So we're going to have the same volume, okay? Well, my friends, I want to get on with this lesson, but you know, we're kind of stuck. We're stuck. Yes, we're stuck because unless we unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. It's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. It says Mike is making a box to hold his favorite DVDs. <laughs> DVDs. I know. I mean, it just seemed like it barely came out a little while ago. And now, yeah, everybody's streaming movies. It's amazing. Anyway, it just sounds kind of funny. The length of the box is seven inches. The width is five inches. And the height is three inches. What is the volume of the box Mike is making? Well, we have our little helper box over here to the right where it says, underline what you are asked to find. Okay, we could do that. That would be right here. What is the volume of the box? That's basically what we're trying to find, right? Now, it does say circle the numbers you need to use to solve the problem. We're definitely going to need, and I'm going to circle the whole thing here. We're going to need the three inches here. We're going to need the seven inches. And we're going to need the five inches. And I circle the unit of measure too, just so that that's important to have the unit of measure. And it says one way is just to use the length, the width, and the height. Okay, and that would be L, W, and H. That's what we use as little symbols. Oh, look, it's right down below. It says you can use a formula, ooh, a formula, to find the volume of a rectangular prism. And this is what we say is the volume. The volume, I'm sorry, this is, this is the formula, blah, blah. We use this formula for volume, which is length times width times height. Okay, very cool. So far, I love you, Go Math. Okay, now step one says identify the length, width, and height of the rectangular prism. Okay, let's take a look at that. Well, we have the length here, looks like to me, I would say seven. Okay, and the width looks like it's five. By the way, I usually, usually length and width are found on, you know, this is part of the base, okay? And then when you go up vertically, that's your height. Or the longer side, I tend to write as a length. So, because this box could be moved in a different way and it might look different. Anyways, as a step two, multiply the length by the width. Okay, pretty simple. Seven times five, which is equal to 35. <laughs> yes, that's if you know your times table, right? Now, step three says multiply the product of the length and blah, blah, blah. Multiply the product of the length and width by the height. Okay, so we have our 35, and then our height was three. And we're going to multiply that. Can I do this in my head? 15, carry the one, nine, 10, 105. So the volume of Mike's DVD box is 105 cubic inches. Okay, because now we have three dimensions, and that refers, yes, that's right three dimensions, or you guys know as 3D, like when you have your 3D glasses on, right? Yeah, you get to see in 3D. All right, now, is there anything else to do? No, that's it, huh? Well, explain how you can use the associative property. Okay, we already did that. That's the associative property we were doing there. That's all that was. Okay, 
Now, let's go on to the next one. Okay, page master. Okay. It says you have learned one formula for finding the volume of a rectangular prism. Okay, what more is there to learn? It's like we're done, right? But it says you can also use another formula. Oh, really? Okay, let's take a look. Volume is equal to base area times height. They represent it as volume is equal to base times height. B is, of course, equal to the area of the base shape. Okay, and height is equal to the height of the solid figure. I've never seen this before. This is the first time in my life I've ever seen it written this way. But, and they use a capital B too. So it's just saying, if you have your little 3D object here, I'm going to try to draw one just because I like to. Yes, I do. Okay, so if you kind of think about the layers going up here, Ooh, it's really sloppy. Yeah, so that's kind of like your base layer right here. Okay, and then you have your layer layers going up there. And then Mr. War is getting really crazy. He's just coloring it all in. What are you doing, Mr. War? Okay, I don't know. Oh, I made a big splotch. Yes, that, my friends, I call a splotch. I don't even know if that's how the word's spelled. It looks kind of like it. Or a, or a smudge. My students know all about what a smudge is. It's a smudge. Ah! Okay, now, now it says another way. Use the area of the base shape and height. Let's try that. Em Emilio's family has a sandcastle kit. How oh, cool. The kit includes molds for several solid figures that can be used to make sandcastles. In case you don't know what a mold is, a mold is just that kind of shape that you can put something in and it'll make that shape, you know? The cookie cutter kind of has like a mold and it'll make that shape of the cookie. I don't know, in case you haven't heard the word before. One of the molds is a rectangular prism like the one shown at the right. Okay, cameraman. Ooh, that was fast. Thank you, sir. Yes, five times four times eight. I can see my dimensions. Can you go just as quick as the way back? Whoa, dude, that was really fast. I'm impressed. How much sand will it take to fill that mold? Okay, yeah, because volume's about occupying that space. Okay, well, we have V is equal to base times height. So we can kind of, here it says, Replace B with an expression for the area of the base shape. Okay. Replace H with the height of the solid figure. All right, all right. I get it. Base is just the base of 5 times 4. So we'll put that there, 5 times 4. And then we're going to do it times 8. Now, 5 times 4 times 8 seems pretty easy. So the base here is going to be 20 inches squared, right? Times our height, which is 8 layers. So 20 times 8 is going to equal, yeah, 160 cubic inches, or we say inches cubed. There's another way you could write that, just so you know. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so it will take 160 cubic inches of sand to fill the rectangular prism mold. Okay, cool. All right. I like it. Do you like it? I like it. Okay. Oh, goody. There's still some more. I thought the video was going to be over, and I was going to get all emotional. All right, try this. Find the volume. Okay, length times width times height. Okay, that's what I'm used to. The length here is seven. Oop, my seven's kind of, yeah, let's fix you a little bit. You look a little bit better, but you look kind of stiff. Don't you look kind of stiff? Oh, no, now you look kind of, well, yeah, you don't look all that great now. Oh, now, what is that, an ear? Oh, Mr. War, what are you doing? Uh, I, you know what? I just kind of lost it. Okay, fix it. There. Seven times four, and the height is five. So obviously we're going to multiply our first two here, I guess. 28 times five. Although, you know what? i tell you what. 20 times five, I'm going to go ahead and figure this out, but there would have been an easier way to do this. 40, carry the four, let's send this 14. 140. 140 cubic feet. But when I was looking at it, see, this is where the associative property would have come in handy here. See, if I multiplied those first, it would have been easier to do this. 35 times 4, because first I could multiply it by 2 and then another 2. So 35 double is 70, and 70 doubles 140. This is why we have something called the associative property. In fact, I was just teaching this to my 6th graders. I know. Mr. Wara, this is a 5th grade video. I know, but I'm just letting you know I'm teaching my 6th graders about that particular property. A show, oh, associate, it's not associate. Oh no, Mr. Wara, associative. Okay, that's what I was trying to do there. Anyway, let's come over to B. Find the unknown measurement. Oh, I'm scared. Okay, it's giving me, looks like the length, giving me the width. Aha, uh -huh. no height. Ooh, but it is giving me the volume. Aha, uh -huh. so that's like, I have this, I have this, and I have this, I don't have that. Okay, so that's easy. Look at, we're just gonna kinda like divide them out. 
cool. Well, the length is five and the width is four times. We don't know. It's just an empty gray square. And then we come over here and we have 20 times something is going to get us to 60. Hello. That's kind of easy. Yeah. It says, think. If I fill this prism with centimeter cubes, each layer would have 20 cubes. How many layers of 20 cubes are equal to 60? Okay, yeah, right. Very, very easy. The unknown's measurement is three centimeters. And it means through like three layers. Like what they were saying here. Each layer would have 20 cubes. So how many layers? Three layers. Oh, so easy. Oh, no. It's the end. Music, go away. Even though I like it. Ooh, I do like it. But no. That's right. These two words get really emotional. I know because I'm on to my second to last video. I only have one more for fifth grade. I feel like we should have like a party. Hey, let's party at the end of the video, no? On the very last video? <laughs> Be like, party, yeah. Okay, anyway. Please don't ask me to sing though. Now, my friends, again, thank you for being part of this fifth grade math experiment on YouTube with me. Very cool.